Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley reporting once again from Washington, D.C. So there you have the main facts of the courageous and history-making call for a debt moratorium for Iceland, a stop, a freeze of all payments on financial debt by Iceland to the British and the Dutch, combined with a commitment to get the International Monetary Fund out of the internal affairs of Iceland. No more diktat, no more interference in the internal affairs of sovereign states, no more conditionalities, no more imposition of that bankrupt, hated Washington consensus, the free enterprise one that some people still have so many illusions about. The IMF comes into your country, they crush you. Deregulation, privatization, union busting, the race to the bottom, the destruction of your state sector, the dismantling of your social safety net, no pensions, no health care, because the money is going to go to the bankers, in this case the city of London and the gnomes of Amsterdam and Rotterdam and this uh, Dutch financial power. They're dealing, of course, with the Anglo-Dutch cartel, otherwise figured forth in the world as Royal Dutch Shell, the uh, flagship of the international finance cartel. Now, that uh, courageous move in Iceland, the ferment and agitation around the idea of a debt moratorium, counters uh, a series of attempts that are being made to set up the International Monetary Fund as a world financial dictatorship. Let me speak frankly. Forget about the Amero for now, guys. Let's look at what's actually happening. Let's put away this, uh, this strange catalog of uh, ideological views. What's actually going on is an attempt to put the International Monetary Fund and its currency, SDRs, special drawing rights, as the world financial dictatorship. And this is the line that has gone through at the G20 in Pittsburgh a couple of weeks ago, and then last week the International Monetary Fund meeting in Istanbul, a big push by Dominique Strauss-Kahn, the former French finance minister, now the boss of the IMF, who says, look, we have the central banks, we have the Federal Reserve, we have the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, and all the rest. But we need something above them, a last line of defense, a lender of last resort for the bankrupt financier oligarchy of the world so that, uh, for example, if we had a panic run on the Federal Reserve, this is something that happened in 1933, uh, when the banks try to get their money out, the member banks of the, of the Federal Reserve have money on deposit there, if they want to get it out, and survive that way. That's a panic run on the Fed. So if that happens, says Dominique Strauss-Kahn, then we're going to have special drawing rights coming in. And this is what's going on. The IMF, we have repeated, has uh, uh, gained $1 trillion in money from uh, the, uh, sorry, this is now a, a trillion dollars from the world. The U.S. has kicked in $100 billion under Obama. This was embodied in the funding bill for the various wars, Afghanistan, uh, Vietnam, it went through with almost no notice. One hundred billion U.S. dollars for Dominique Strauss-Kahn and the IMF. That's way beyond anything that's been done with this uh, alleged Amero. This is what's actually happening. This is empirical. This is not an ideological chimera. This is what you see. So that's what you've got to fight. Get the U.S. out of the IMF. Get the IMF out of Washington. Not one penny for the IMF. And, of course, in Iceland, there is a growing uh, understanding that once you let the IMF in the door, then you are going to be crushed. And let me just point out, when the IMF comes into Iceland, they're working secretly, but they have a catalog of demands, and they're trying to say, well, uh, we want you to dismantle your health care plan. We want you to destroy your educational system because we're going to need all that money for London and The Hague. Now, if, the, if we had a panic run on the Federal Reserve, which is now well within the, the realm of possibility, what would be the conditionalities imposed by the IMF on the United States in order to get those loans? The letter of intent. This would be the Washington consensus turned against us. It would say, you've got to bust all your unions, bust the teachers' union, bust the UAW, uh, essentially dump all of this uh, 
uh, property that, that Obama has, in effect, seized, just dump that on the market and have an immediate crash. So everything goes down to virtually zero, right, creative destruction, as they say. Uh, we would be told that Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid simply cannot be afforded. They have to be abolished, not even wrecked on the uh, gradual installment plan the way Obama wants to do it, but wrecked, looted, sacked. So the money would then go into the Federal Reserve, and then that would be paid to the International Monetary Fund. Now, if you find that some of those things that the IMF would do to us correspond to what some people think of as the freedom agenda, as, as put forward by certain politicians, that's a moment for you to think very, very deeply about what you're asking for. Is there any economic populism in a demand to take away your pension, to take away your health care, to take away your unemployment insurance, to take away your food stamps if you're living on those? Is that economic populism? There's not a, a shred, there's not a grain of economic populism in that. That's elitism that's, that's uh, essentially camouflaging itself with a, with a kind of cultural populist demagogy. So if the IMF is going to bail out the Fed, all of us will pay the price. So the Icelanders have learned, don't let the IMF into the door. It's almost impossible to get rid of them. Once they've given you a loan with banker's arithmetic, that debt will keep growing. You'll n never be finished paying. So that's what we've got to think about here in the United States. Notice also that in the background, the pound is uh, overtaking the dollar in a number of critical ways. Uh, the, the pound has now gotten over $2 per British pound. This is a very, um, well, it's an epic-making thing. The pound for a long time was worth about 280, and it's been as low as almost a dollar. The pound almost went under one U.S. dollar during the Reagan years. Thatcher called Reagan with a the tearful, hysterical phone call to say, hey, "Mr. President, don't let the pound sink below one dollar." And of course, stupid Reagan, uh, full, with his his empty head full of Austrian school and Chicago school economic blather. Uh, was willing to make that sacrifice for the mother country. By the way, this is the department of Paul Adolf Volcker. This is this is the the department that Volcker was running, the pound support uh, department. But now we find that uh, by any number of measures, London is overtaking New York as the main center for speculation, and the pound has now passed the yen among currency reserves because the various. British puppet states of Eastern Europe, the Hungarians, the Poles, the Czechs, and some others, these uh, backward uh, free market uh, plantations that the IMF and NATO have set up, they're putting their money preferentially into London. So watch out for Perfide Albion. Watch out for British treachery against the dollar. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 